Welcome back to the channel guys. Happy New Year. Um, just a small video this afternoon just to show you guys where I'm up to with the rental. Uh, by the way, that's what we're calling this at the moment. This is the rental. Um, the black one that everyone knows is called the black one. Um, so lots of messages over the Christmas break asking how I'm getting on with the rental. So I thought I'd let you guys know. Now then. At first glance, it may actually seem like I haven't um, actually achieved much, but that's not the case. Um, what I found with the black van is I raced to get all the big jobs done. Um, rush in and get the furniture in, get the floor down, um, get as many of the big jobs done as possible to make it feel like you're actually making progress. Um, and then you're left with all the horrible little jobs that take so much time, especially as then things are in the way. So many times I've seen on Instagram people putting posts up saying, um, finally got round to doing this job. Um, all of the real time consuming, time consuming horrible stuff um, at the end that even sometimes gets left. Well, this one is being set out as a rental, so I can't leave anything. So I have been doing all of the horrible stuff all of the boring stuff, all of the behind the scenes stuff, um, and hoping that it will just all come together at the end. Um, I remember when someone taught me how to plaster and he said, take care of the edges and the rest will take care of itself. And that is exactly how I'm approaching this van build, especially as at the moment, I'm really high in motivation. So um, my patience is really high at the moment, that kind of thing. So I'm doing all the awkward stuff, um, all of the boring stuff, all of the stuff that doesn't seem like it's um, really pushing it along, um, but we really are, and I'm going to show you all of them right now. I have decided on the finishes in my van. They have changed along the way, but I've decided on the finishes, and I'm going to use tweed. Tweed fabric that doesn't stretch, which is a massive pain in the bum compared to um, the likes of four-way stretch carpet. But I do think... Um, even if you have to have a join every now and then, I do think the finish is a lot nicer. Um, so for example, at the moment, not so that they're not left behind and forgotten about, I have done the furthest most um, pillar, I believe it's called the D pillar, and I've also done the side door pillar in the said fabric. Hope that comes out well enough. Um, I also actually hope that you can see um, the joint. So here, because it's not four-way stretch carpet, ignore this, um, because it's not four-way stretch, doing one section um, first and then overlapping on this corner was the only way that I could actually manage to get um, this fabric to go in all the directions I needed to. So there is actually um, two seams, a bit like an arch, um, Kept them all going the same way, so I started at the bottom and then overlapped at the top, overlapped a bit like a roof, roof tiles, that kind of thing. Looks absolutely awesome, absolutely in love with it. And like I said, I've done the sliding door um, reveal, if you like, in builder's terms. I've done all of that in the same fabric. Looks absolutely wicked. Um, I started with a four mil close cell foam to give it that soft feel and you can actually see that it's soft to touch it's absolutely lovely it is a pain in the backside to work with but it is actually a really really good finish just with the standard um spray adhesive i've actually got one of the big bottles now because i'm doing so much of it um, but leading on to that what i want to show you and i'm quite proud of this is the finish of my b pillar up round and through the bulkhead because this van come installed with a bulkhead i've got the wrap around um b pillar trims looks absolutely wicked had to get a new um door rubber that had an extra flap on it um the list goes on and on and on but it looks absolutely lovely So a lot of people decide to remove this, as did I on the black van. Um, this holds the existing wiring from front to back on the Mercedes Sprinter. A lot of people choose to remove this and build a panel um, with a return, that kind of thing. That's what I did on the Sprinter, It's an uh, on my black one. It's an absolute horrible job. And do you know what? 
I love the look of this. Um, here's my new trims that cover up. Um, these would usually finish along this edge here, but these extras run around there, um, finishing that off because that's always a horrible part to um, decorate. And then I've got a bulkhead trim that goes across here, down, and likewise along there. Can't explain how well that has come out. Um, and through here, that conduit always stays because that's what's carrying um, the wires from here, from within your headliner and down the B pillar to across there. I love it. I think this is okay. For the adventure look that I'm going for, I'm not going for, um, you know, um, really pretty, pretty. I'm going for hopefully like a, a cool, hard look. And up against these other trims, I think it looks absolutely fine, absolutely lovely. And then what will happen is where my unit starts there, I'll just lop that off and then those cables will disappear um, around the back of the unit. But I think it looks absolutely beautiful. This up here just looks like factory. So like I was trying to explain, I've been taking care of the, um, the real long-winded jobs. And one of them um, in the Mercedes Sprinter is the step in the front wheel drive um, it's not the same as the rear wheel drive and the 4x4 but in the front wheel drive you get a step from cargo area up into the cab um, it's a real funny shape it's got lots of horrible horrible nooks and crannies and shapes and things like that it's taken me an absolute age um, I've used a router because I'm trying to up my game a bit and I just always hate no matter how um, straight you hold it I always hate the finish that a jigsaw gives so I've done everything with a router um, it's taken some real time and it doesn't look like much it looks like two pieces of wood and do you know what it's because it is just two pieces of wood but let me show you so this is the step going from cargo area up in all of this is done with a lovely router all of that looks absolutely beautiful and what I've done is I've actually used the sample that I've got um, all the different sample colors and things like that and I've used them as packers because they are the exact size of what I need so I've slid a packer under there and then knowing that that will also have flooring on it that is the perfect size so this is absolutely seamless now I decided to go for a curve I don't know why I just couldn't you, you can go straight across but I just could not shift um, the desire to make that step curved like that and what it does um, because once you've put your swivel seats on here um, it does help with reaching because you do end up quite high and you end up with dangly feet syndrome um, so it does help with a with the step up and B with somewhere to put your feet uh, my ceiling panels, um, at the moment I'm waiting for um, some fixings, so uh, they're just being held up by these dead men. Um, my ceiling panels are the Evo Motion straight up ply panels um, that you can buy. Uh, already CNC cut to pretty much close enough, apart from my bulkhead trim there, which not everyone um, has. They go straight up, all the holes line up. Uh, it's kind of a case of pick your battles. Um, if you've got to order three sheets of ply at the moment anyway, the price that they are, um, it's like five five mil I think it is, um, you're gonna spend money on that, some money, you gotta go pick it up, etc., etc. It's cheap enough to buy something like that, pre-made, pre-cut, because the shape of a Sprinter van, I can't tell you, is just so annoying. Um, but having them, you've got to buy ply anyway, so just buy the ply off them, they'll throw it for a CNC machine and it just saves you so much time. And then I basically covered the ceiling panels in six mil closed cell foam. It's a bit thicker than the um, than the pillars that I did. Um, six mil closed cell foam and then the um, tweed fabric over the top. Um, and it looks absolutely plush. It just gives it that, um, it's a bit more of a softer feel. I've got a couple of lights in just to see how they work. Um, just waiting on the fix-ins and then it's good to go but it you know I think it looks lovely uh, 
Uh, another little job I've done is I'm now ready for my bed frame to go on. This is 40-40 um, aluminium extrusion. Um, this one has a radius edge, um, just to make it look better when you open um, when you open the garage, and um, this just looks like a better finish rather than just um, square um, square extrusion um, bolted to the side of your van. So I've got that, and then that will span from side to side with two separate, um, almost like two separate single bed frames. Uh, I'm going to make the slats out of the IKEA slats, but they are ready to go. Honestly, it's a cold afternoon. As I've mentioned, I'm trying to approach this van build a bit different. I don't want all the horrible stuff left at the end. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but the five spotlights on the top of the black van, they're not even wired up um, and it breaks my heart. But now at this stage, to wire those up, um, it can be done and it will be done. But at the moment, when have I got that amount of time um, and patience to start taking stuff down again? just to um, run a wire up through. Didn't want that to be the case. I've already ran the wires now for the spotlights. Um, I've even learned how a relay works. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have an LED light bar on the top um, and two spotlights lower down uh, in the grill. They cannot function unless the vehicle is running. They will run off the vehicle's battery but there's a there's a little um, we used to call it remote uh, like a remote feed, um, but there is an ignition feed under the driver's seat um, that only comes to life when the engine is actually running. That goes to a relay that says yes please I want the power from the vehicle's battery. It then takes the power from the vehicle's battery direct with a fuse um, for a switch up to the light bar. That wire is already in. When my roof rack comes. Um, and we fit that, I've literally got one connection of two wires, um, positive, negative, and then I can flick the switch and it's done. Um, I'm, get, I'm taking care and I'm exactly the same with the front spotlights as well. And here they are guys, um, two switches, um, totally dead until uh, the engine is running. That's actually the OE symbol for a light. These are OE switches from Mercedes. Um, I may actually get a little sticker here that says one for fog and like maybe one for the LED bar, um, LED light bar, that kind of thing. So the van, apart from the wheels and the fact it's got a Max van, it still looks like a builder's van a bit. At the end of this week, really excited. All of the windows going in and the flares from Flare Space are going in. Me and Andy at Ape Adventures are going to take care of that Thursday, Friday. Can't wait. He's going to hold my hand with that one because... They are um, quite expensive and I don't want to um, mess that up if I'm truthful. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd drop in, tell you guys what I'm up to. I'm up to all the boring stuff, all of the pretty stuff um, that, you, that you don't want to leave to the end of the van build. I think this is the new way of um, building vans. So just an update. Here we are. I'm back to work now. Um, two weeks off, ready to go. Um, check out my Instagram. Um, because I am going to be busy. See you again. Thanks for watching. Please do consider subscribing, hitting the button, hit the bell, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, all of that jazz. Um, needy, needy, needy. Thank you.